ACT Math Tutoring Packet, Answer Key Part 1. This is a packet for the ACT Math section. It's going to go fairly quickly. If you want to use this, I recommend you use the pause button a lot. Uh, for example, here's some ACT math tips. I'll just go through them very briefly. You should read them and think about them. You have 60 questions to get done in 60 minutes. So time's a big issue. Make sure you have a plan. Figure out what your, your, your pace is. A lot of people give advice, do this, do that. It's up to you. The one thing I say is get the question right. It's going really fast or medium slow or whatever, and you're not getting the right answers. It's kind of pointless. So make sure you get the question right, whatever your pace is. And if you get 40 of them right, great. If you get 50 of them right, great. If you only can do 35 and you have to guess on the last 25, fine. But get those 35 as right as you can. Um, you guys are great problem solvers. Eliminate choices, work backwards, plug in numbers, make it real. Plug in the number 10 or 100 and see what happens. If you're not sure, guess the middle one, C or H. They're the most common answers, or at least they seem to be. Um, make sure you're getting a good night's sleep and eat a good breakfast. Get there on time. Don't bring your cell phone. Wear layers to the test so you can take them off or put them on if the test ends up being a uh, test area ends up being too cold or too warm. And make sure you draw lots of pictures or coordinate plane. You should see a lot of this uh, when I go through these. So first subject on the test is going to be geometry. And for geometry, we have things like uh, parallel lines. So we also have vertical angles. This would be 42 degrees because these two are vertical. And then in parallel lines, we have something called alternate interior angles. So this is 42 degrees also because these two are the same. This is 138 degrees because these two are supplementary. So this is also 138, 138, 138 and 42. For a polygon, these three angles add up to 180. And if you can do that, you're pretty much good to go. So you add these up and you figure out this has to be 60, therefore this has to be 120 because these two also have to add up to 180. You're going to see that a lot as we go forward here. So here's some problems to do. I need to zoom out a little bit. I'm not going to read them. This is where you should read them. And then I'm just going to blow through them. Uh, angle A measures 45. Therefore, angle E is 45. Therefore, this is 135. Vertical angles I always put in right away. These three add up to 180. That's 115, meaning I need 65 more. Again, I'm going very quickly. I won't say it again. Use the pause button. So this is isosceles triangle. These two are 25. That makes this 130. That makes this 50. This is isosceles. That makes this 50. I could also say that this is uh, 80, but I don't care. That makes this 130. This has got the alternate interior angles because it's a trapezoid, which means these are congruent. Therefore, this is 30. These three add up to 180, therefore this is 45. In the figure below, we've got all these collinear. We've got all sorts of, this is 140, this is 40. B, C, D is 47. So that gets this to 93, which means this angle is 87. CAD is 76. Add them all together, we find this is 17. For those who are laughing, saying, oh, I do this with external angles, great, that's fine, but I don't find most people remember that. So I like to do it this way. Parallel lines, how many are 50 degrees? Well, this is 130, this has to be 50 and 50. So there's two of them. This has to be 50 and 50, 130, 130. Alternate interior angles, 50. Vertical angles, 50. Straight line, these have to add up to 180. Another 50. Another 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
that is a tricky problem. Whenever I see 3, 4, 5, 6, I immediately want to um, write an equation. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, the first thing I would say is we have a trapezoid, and it's got four vertex points. I'm only going to highlight three of them right now. We know that that's 180 degrees. And somebody pointed this out to me recently. We have three 180. Every time we add one, add 180. So we end up with 360. So we have this 3x plus 4x plus 5x plus 6x equals 360. Add them up, we get 18x equals 360, x equals 20. Now a lot of people immediately want to jump on that and do that. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see. I would say about 80% of the mistakes I see, I might have mentioned this before, are reading the question, 20% are negatives. X equals 20, but what does it ask for? Go back and read the question. What's the measure of the largest interior angle? Well, that'd be 6 times 20, 120. So back to my little technique here. 3 gets me to 180. That gets me to 360. One more gets me to 360 plus 180, which is 540. This is regular, which means all of these angles are the same. I'm erasing these on purpose. So we're going to take that 540 and divide by 5 and get 108. So this is 108. This is 108. That means this is 72. This is 72. That means this is 36. The ACT math test has this weasel statement saying illustrated figures are not necessarily drawn to scale. That's nonsense. They are. If it looks like it's the same, hey, this looks like 3, it's 3. Hey, this looks like 7, it's 7. So when you look at them, you can say, oh, this is getting me to side angle side. I, I don't care. I know this is going to be 60, therefore this has to be 40. Cannot be determined, extremely rarely used. I've seen it twice now out of a lot of questions I've looked at. So I would not ever pick it unless I was very sure. Which two triangles can grow in here? Looks to me like this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So now we have to be very careful and read the question because we have capitalized not. Is AC and BD congruent? Looks like it. A, D, and A, E doesn't look like it. Stop? No, I'm going to keep going. Because it takes me an extra few seconds. A, E, B, E, D, A, B, C, B, A, E, A, B, E, B, A. And now I know I did it right. So I take that extra five or six seconds to make sure I did the problem right. These are overlapping triangles, and these are parallel lines. Without them being parallel, you can't do this. You know, this is 45. As I mentioned several times, now we're right back to add up to 180. We should get 105. This is a side angle side. We have congruent side, reflexive, and then A, B, and C, D. Therefore, the angle has to be between those sides. Angle 1 has to be congruent to angle 4. I'd like to emphasize one more time, you should not be looking at this for problem solving. You need to try these problems first, pause the video, and then I'll show you how I do them. Way too many problems for me to go through each one in detail. Cross multiply, if you have a proportion, and they love their proportions. Sometimes you can just look at it, though, and say, oh, 7 times 2, therefore it's 6 times 2. You could also look at triangles and say, oh, to get from here to there, it's times 2. And that's called the scale factor, 2 to 1. Oh, by the way, it's also the perimeter ratio, which the ACT likes to do sometimes. They put it in what they call perimeter ratio. I have no idea why. It should just be called scale factor, but they like to. So if we look at this, we say, well, 5 goes to 10, therefore 4 goes to 8. At the same time, I'll show you in a second how you can just line it up, run with it. Here we go, sand on top, 200,000, don't know the sand, 80,000, 4,000. A lot of people tell me, you know what, I want to get rid of as many zeros as I can. 
But then they start getting rid of zeros on the other side, which you can't. Either way, you should get 10,000. I like to draw two triangles. Makes it a little bit easier to see. They don't have to be to scale. I want the longest side, so I am going anything I want. I'll go 9 to 6 equals 15 to x. Cross multiply and solve, 10. Again, I would never pick cannot be determined unless I am absolutely positively sure. Math test, 12 students earned an A, 12 out of x equals 25 out of 100. Cross multiply, or just look at it and say it's times 4. Done. This is a nice tricky problem with the centimeters. So we got tall, 200 tall, uses 240 long. 150 tall uses X long. Do the math, should get J. Scale drawing of an apartment, very similar to a proportion problem. We've got this, and then we've got the bigger one, four by six. The longest side of the apartment is 30. X, four over X equals six over 30. Five times six is 30, five times four is 20. This is a nice problem. I would definitely take a second and work it out. But long story short, how much money should Lauren get? Well, we don't know, it's out of 200. But we do know she did four out of the Whoops, my bad. Six out of four plus five plus six, 15 hours. Cross multiply. I actually have to get a calculator out now. I've been doing everything in my head so far. She should get 80 bucks. There's more geometry to come, but that is the end of my first piece of ACT tutoring packet. Happy mathing.